Again, good morning and uh, welcome to uh, today is the 29th of uh, October and uh, this is the last time we're going to meet in October. Next time we meet it's going to be November 3rd. So uh, we s are going to finish this section basically uh, next uh, Tuesday. Then immediately we're going to start with Earth Science on Thursday of next week. Uh, the the exam will be will be uh, will happen before Thanksgiving, but most likely not exactly in the time when we decided to have it. And it's still covering the same chapters as we agreed on up to chapter 19, which is Tuesday. Okay, so exam four will cover the rest of the uh, the materials of this course. So that's basically in a nutshell, first of all, in terms of uh, uh, business. The second item in terms of the business, there is a quiz already covering chapter 17 is already posted. So hopefully you guys had a chance to go through it. And before it's over, there will be another quiz also covering this chapter that we're uh, doing right now, namely about the types of uh, chemical reactions. There are two basic ones. Uh, oxid uh, oxidation and reduction, that's one, and the other one is the um, neutralization or uh, acid-base uh, reactions. So those are the two main things of this chapter that I want to really also for you guys to have an understanding of this thing. So that also will have its own quiz. Uh, the quiz has 20 questions. And it's, uh, I think I gave you more than enough time to do the quiz, I think two and a half minutes per question. Uh, which gives you about 50 minutes to do the entire quiz. Uh, you have three chances to take the quiz. The exam will actually uh, count only the highest grade of those attempts. But since this is a large, large, basically, uh, question uh, data bank, uh, very, very likely chance that when you take it the second attempt, it will not be the same. So if you feel you did not do well in the first attempt, my advice for you is take your time, go through the chapter, go through your notes, make sure you have an understanding of these things and come back to it, uh, not immediately because chances are you're not going to see the same questions again. So if you bank on that, that's not gonna happen. So uh, you need to be ready for the second attempt. And then if you are still not satisfied with that, you still have a third chance, in which case I would recommend that you uh, you uh, you read even more. Now, Sherry asked a question before we started recording about when is this due, it's due next week. It does not, by the end of next week, it does not mean that you start uh, no problem, Sarah, I will remember that. Sarah is asking to put the questions on the, uh, on the chat session, no problem, especially since we are probably, uh, uh, we're not having a lot of people showing up because I think the time now is hopefully next week when the clock changes, more people will show up and uh, probably we will not be uh, needing this thing anymore. But you're right, we're gonna post that thing there. So to go back to my point, the fact that this quiz is due by the end of next week, you should not really delay taking it until toward the end because that's gonna be a lot of pressure on you. So my suggestion is to start it immediately since it's available for you right now, to start taking it immediately, engage yourself, see where you sit. If you find yourself comfortable with it, that's fine. If not, then you still have time to basically recover. Do not leave it to the last basically couple of hours or three hours and you decide to start on it. That is too close and uh, you might not be happy with the uh, the grade of these quizzes. Okay, again, this is a graded uh, assignment. Having said that, let's delve into chapter, I don't remember the name, the number, but like I said, it, de it deals with the types of uh, chemical reactions, okay? Anyway, so there are two classes of chemical reactions, as I said. So the first one is uh, the kind where an acid and a base basically are mixed together and they neutralize one another, okay? We will uh, learn about uh, what are they, basically what, uh, what makes them they are, basically acids and bases. And one of the ways of measuring the acidity of, or the uh, lack thereof, mainly the, uh, how basic the uh, solution is, is the pH. Uh, scales, which we're going to understand and learn about it. We're going to learn a little bit about how the effects that in terms of uh, acid rain, acidic rain, I should say, and basic oceans. 
And uh, then we're going to talk about a different kind of uh, chemical reaction where actually uh, the oxidation and reduction, namely where uh, there is an exchange of electrons versus this one where there is an exchange actually of protons. Okay, those are that's the main difference between the two of them. So Sarah asked about the question to be posted. So let me be a good citizen and do that. Okay, where is the chat? Oh, man. So let me stop sharing. It's in here. Okay. So, what is the difference between uh, the two main types of chemical reactions? Chemical reactions, I mean by in this case, are the first one is. Since we're starting it in this uh, order, acid-base uh, reaction, that's called the neutralization action, a reaction, okay? And the second one, and uh, oxidation, oxidation, I started with an X, <laughs> oxidation, reduction, sometimes it's called the redux equation, I mean reaction, okay? Well, the answer to that is the first one, acid-base reaction, involves the exchange of protons. Namely, one atom gives up a proton, the other one accepts it, okay? Uh, whereas in the case of uh, the uh, oxidation reduction, one of them actually gives an electron, the other one accepts it. So that's basically what type of materials they exchange between one another, okay? One of them gives an H plus, the hydrogen basically uh, nucleus, which is a proton, okay? And the other one gives an electron, which is an E minus. Does this make sense to you guys? Yes. Okay, so that's the first one. That is the essence of the whole uh, chapter, actually. That is the main idea behind it, okay? Then we're going to learn, as a matter of fact, I brought my stuff in here to do a demo for you guys. I have a multimeter in here that measures, among other things, currents. Right now I have it set up in currents, okay? And uh, the reason why I want to measure it in currents, and as you can see, this measures, uh, measures the currents in uh, up to 10 amps, or up in, in milliamps or microamps, since I have it I have uh, what I have in this case. I really don't have a battery. I have a lemon in here in this case, and I attach to it a piece of iron in here. Okay, actually a paper clip. Okay, and on the other side, technically I should use a uh, another kind of metal. So I have copper in here, but instead of doing copper, I'm going to rely just on the copper that is inside the ends of this uh, multimeter because this multimeter has two basically wires in it. So one wire will be connected to the to the iron metal, and the other one will be directly injected into the lemon. And we will see that this actually acts as a battery. It's going to generate a current, albeit it's a weak current, because I really don't have a lot of concentration of ions in it. But that's going to be good enough for me to illustrate the point that this is a battery. And that is actually how batteries work. All batteries do the same thing, as I was showing uh, the same principle. Okay, This has an acid inside of it. It has a, uh, a, a, a metal in here, and it has actually another one which is uh, sending electrons, and there is an exchange of ions and electrons in this case, and all of a sudden this works as a battery, okay? This is actually a battery. So the same principle, okay? So that is an important application of some of this stuff that we're going to be doing in here. We're going to talk about electrolysis and how it's used actually in terms of uh, 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 getting uh, pure materials. Like for example, it's one of the its applications in the early days, and it was really a big revolution. Is it was in the production of aluminum. Okay. Then we'll talk about uh, some subsidiary, subsidiary uh, kind of reactions, namely corrosions and combustions. Okay. So this is basically where we stand in terms of uh, the content for this chapter. So this is in a nutshell what it is. So an acid, uh, an example of acids are, for example, this thing. Okay. They, they have concentrations of uh, basically, uh, they're, they're acidic. If you measure their pH, you will find that it's less than seven. Okay. Also vinegar and some of the household items like they use for cleaning and also in the soda. Okay. 
So that's typical stuff that is acidic, okay? A base, on the other hand, is also used in the industry a lot, for example, in soaps, okay, and in cleaning products and also baking soda and detergent boosters and all kinds of things, okay? They have, they have, uh, they have, they are basic, okay? So those are the two kinds of materials. And what is that supposed to mean? One of them has a uh, ability to basically uh, give hydrogen, okay, plus, and those are the acids. The other one are going to accept it. And once they accept it, the OH in the basis will react with that hydrogen and form water. So the basic chemical reaction that is involved when acid and a base basically uh, meet, they will form water, H2O, and then salt. Salt depends now on the types of acids and bases that are involved, okay? So this is the basic chemical reaction that this is involved. So the main product is going to be water plus a, 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 a plus a salt, okay, of some sort. NOH, for example, when it reacts with, uh, what is it? Uh, HCl, for example, it forms water and salt, regular salt, household salt, NaCl, okay? So that is a typical reaction in here. So a chemical, so acid is a chemical that donates hydrogen ions, okay? H plus, those are the protons. A chemical uh, base, which is also the opposite, it accepts that. So that's in a nutshell what it is. So that's really the definition of it. Again, there is an animation in here or tries to do so, okay? So this is the hydrogen basically atom right now. So if you keep on basically uh, uh, moving around in here, you're going to at the end basically end up with the hydrogen ion. So at the end, once the electron leaves it, so you end up with a hydrogen ion. This presentation has about 139 slides, but it's basically trying to take you a little step by step in some, some of these processes basically to explain what the, uh, what the, uh, what the steps are okay so in this case we have a hydrogen ion which is really a hydrogen atom without its electron okay again this is just an illustration of the points in here until uh, so again it's just basically trying to argue that this is an h plus so this is a proton really okay because you don't have an electron anymore so this is a single proton by itself so again, if you don't remember it, this is one way of remembering it. So a base accepts BA, an acid uh, uh, donates, okay? So BAAD, okay? I know some of you probably will already have some way of saying it differently, but that's fine, however you say it, okay? So again, when you take a base or an acid in this case, HCl, and you put it in water, what happened in this case is going to uh, uh, take the hydrogen and basically form uh, something which is H3O+, and that is a hydronium, okay? And then the chlorine in this case will be the ion of the chlorine floating inside the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the water, okay? So this is how uh, an, an acid dissolves. So the way it dissolves is by creating this hydronium, basically uh, ions, plus whatever is left from the acid, in this case, chlorine, okay? The uh, chlorine ions. Now, the problem in this case is the, the higher the concentration of these hydroniums, the, the easier it is for an acid to dissolve in water this way, the stronger it is. That means it has created so much of hydronium ions in it, okay? If it is hard to dissolve in water this way, then the acidity of that acid is not high. It does not dissolve well in water. It does not appear to have formed a lot of hydronium ions in it. So that's basically in a nutshell, how strong or how weak the, uh, the acid is. So again, this is just to illustrate the point in here, how the hydronium ions form, in this case for uh, HCl, okay? Uh, and uh, at the end, you have an H3O plus and the chlorine ions by themselves, okay? So this is in a nutshell how the, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, HCl in this case, acid dissolves in water and you will have a high concentration in this case, okay? So again, this is basically how 
this dissolves in that. So let me try to read, read in it now in terms of uh, a base, okay? So what we do in this case, in, uh, so the, the hydrogen in this case, the, 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 uh, the, the, uh, the hydrogen, one of the hydrogens will go to the NH3 now, okay? And you'll be left with an OH, okay? Which is uh, the, 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 the base now is the formation OH minus versus the uh, HO, H3O plus. So that's basically how this forms in here. So again, how strong is a base now? Depends on how many OH negatives are for, formed. What are they called? The hydro, hydroxides, basically. Okay, ions. So, so again, this is just to illustrate the uh, the process through which how a base dissolves in water. And again, the stronger it is, the more OH negatives are going to form in it. Again, uh, the water now is acting as a base in this case, okay? Oh, no, I'm sorry, the water is acting as an acid with a base and the water acts actually as a, as, a, uh, <clears throat> as a base with an acid. So that's one of the behaviors of water that is kind of, uh, some of the elements do that too. Sometimes they behave as an acid and sometimes they behave as, an, uh, as a base. So water is an example of them. So when water behaves as an acid, what does it lose? So now it's, it's an acid. Remember an acid loses an ion, loses a proton, okay? Which is the hydrogen ion. And when it behaves like an acid, I mean like a base, then in this case, it's going to lose a hydrogen ion. I'm, going, I'm sorry, what does it gain? It's going to gain the hydrogen ion. So I have two H2Os now, two molecules of water now, okay? H2O and an H2O. One of them is going to lose a hydrogen ion and because it becomes basically this H3O uh, o plus, which is the hydronium. And the other one, basically, since it lost it, becomes an OH negative in this case. So which of these two, molecule A or B, is acting as an acid? It's the one that lost its proton. OK, so that's B. And the one that gains it, that is the one that is acting as, an, as a base. The whole point in here that we're trying to reach actually is the idea of the uh, pH because the concentration of these two or the hydronium concentration is exactly what the definition of the, uh, of the, uh, of the pH is, okay? Again, this is just to illustrate the points in here. I was trying to, uh, trying to go through it in here. This is the process through which this works, okay. So again, salt is an ion compound from the reaction of an acid and a base. That is one of the pro two products in a chemical reaction involving an acid and a base. So the second question in here is, what are products of a, an acid-base reaction? What do you think the answer to that is? There are two main ones, usually. Any idea? The first one and the second one? Come on, guys. There are two, two of them. 
what are the products of an acid-base reaction, what do we get out of them? If I have an acid plus a base and react with one another. So yes, this is the second question. Uh, Mm, not necessarily. I'm not talking about H2O in this case, okay? I'm talking about any kind of uh, acid. For example, an HCl plus uh, any OH, for example, this chemical reaction, okay? So, oh, I'm sorry, this is the second. I did not even post it, okay? So, this is a question. So, I have an acid and a base, and I put them together. They give me two main products. One of them is for example what do we get from this? So the HCl in this case will lose its proton. And the proton will combine with the OH, in this case the hydroxide, to form what? So H and OH becomes what? Water, that's one product, okay? Now I still have an A and a Cl, they combine to form NaCl. So the two products usually are water. That's one. And another product, which is usually a salt. Salt now in this case happened to be NaCl for this chemical reaction. Okay, so those, those are the two main products usually from an acid-base reaction. So you have water, H2O, plus some sort of a salt. Does the question make sense and the answer to it also makes sense? Through this example, this is not all the time the case though, but through this example and anywhere, you will always have to this, uh, these two products, water plus salt. Yes or no? Come on, guys. I need it's still too early, but I'm hoping that you guys are awake now. Okay, Sherry thinks it's yes. Okay, good. So I have people now who are gaining. Very good. Okay, so that's basically the, the second question of the day today, okay? So this is one of the products. This is actually that chemical reaction I was talking about it, okay? So here are more examples. Hydrogen cyanide with the sodium hydroxide, NOH, gives you sodium cyanide, which is a salt, plus water, okay? Nitric acid, which is HNO3, plus potassium hydroxide, will give you salt, which is potassium nitrate, plus water. See here, the common thing in here, in all of these reactions, is water. What you have in this side, you have an acid. All of them are acids. What you have on this side, you have all of them are bases, okay? And all of these things are some sort of a salt, okay? Calcium chloride, sodium fluoride, potassium nitrate, all of them are basically the same thing, okay? So that is an illustration of the question that the second question of the day. Does this now make more sense to you guys? You see the water everywhere in here plus salt of some kind. The salt now depends on the acid itself and the base, okay? Very good. So this is in a nutshell what an acid base basically a reaction is. So again, I have this base, which is this complicated, basically, organic matter combined with an HCl. And at the end, I will have now the this salt 
plus the chlorine now that is ready to basically uh, form because this is an ionic uh, structure now. So basically it's ready. No, actually this is the whole thing now is a, is a, uh, this salt, but it's in ionic form, okay? Because I still have one of the charges in here not neutralized. So I have this chemical reaction now. I have the hydrogen chloride, HCl, with potassium hydroxide, KOH, okay? I know water will form between the H and the OH, which is give me in this case H2O. So what salt should I get from this? Which, which is the correct answer? What is left after I take this hydrogen from here and put it with the OH and now I have water. So what is left in the chemical reaction with the chemical compounds in here? The correct answer is somebody. Potassium chloride. Yes or no? Okay. So that's basically in a nutshell how this thing is working. Always pay attention to the, uh, to how this, where the protons are coming from, okay? In this case, they always come from the, uh, uh, the acids. So when they combine with the, uh, the, to form water and know what is left is basically the salt that forms in this case. So the salt now is really a, a uh, depends on the uh, reactants. Again, as I mentioned earlier, strong acids and base ionize completely in water, okay? So the strong ones at the end, you will be completely ionized. The weak ones, they don't completely uh, ionize in water, okay? Uh, that's how they dissolve in water, okay? So we'll have some remnants of those. So if you do, that uh, acid is not as strong as the ones that dissolve completely, okay? Weak acids and they do not ionize completely. The key word in this case is completely, okay? So that's what makes the difference between a strong and a weak acid and also base too. So again, Weak acids and bases do not ionize completely in water. This is an illustration of some of them, like this one and this one, they remain intact. They did not dissolve. Some ions will form, and hydronium would form in this case of this uh, acid, which is the acidic acid, and some others, no. So in this case, you have remnants of them. You have one and two that did not be completely. No, what is the other one? There must be an ion. Here is an ion. Here is another ion. But three of them are intact, okay? and the water molecules are floating all over the place in here. Okay, this is the illustration. So relative strength of the bases. Now, the stronger the base, or the stronger the, uh, the acid in this case, is the more basically uh, uh, dissolves in liquid water. I don't have really liquid water in here. What I have, I have a lemon, okay? A lemon in this case has is an acidic. It has an acidic, very high acidic uh, concentrations. I don't have really a pH meter to measure it. I have, I think, something to measure the pH, but I don't have it available right now. But the point being in here, it should have free ions, free enough to move so that if I have another metal right now, which is this kind of metal, these two metals, they have different affinity for electrons because they are different kinds of metals. What I have actually, I have copper on one side and have iron, which is just a piece of uh, basically paper clip. This one I got it from a 20 gauge wire, okay, of copper that you can find in, that I actually got from uh, Home Depot, okay. And then uh, this is the other one is just a normal paper clip, which is iron. Now, because they have different basically way of holding to their electrons, because of this base now, if they connect the wire, if I connect these two wires, there will be a current now flowing because there is an exchange of electrons facilitated by the ions inside the, 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 uh, the lemon, okay? So that's how this, uh, the, the process is working now. So this will act as a battery, actually, 
because once an electron moves from the one that has very high affinity for electrons to one that has very low affinity for electrons, basically with the different conductivities, what happened in this case is that they will be easily uh, basically interacting with the positives basically from this side, the positive ions inside the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the lemon, and basically on the other side now recomb recombining, basically freeing the ions move to the other side. So there will be a lot of bunch of negative stuff moving to this side and a bunch of positive stuff on the other side. Now, because this has a high concentration basically of acid, it's going to break the, 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 the charges and move them freely the way they are. So there is now a, a continuous process. At some point they form, but the acid will dissolve them as long as it still has some acidity in it. If it's completely run out of acidity, at that point it becomes useless. It's not going to do electricity. I don't. I'm not going to connect this one. I have a different copper, like I said, which is coming from my gauge in here. That I'm going to measure the current to see if this is truly really works or not. Because this is just theory, okay? Unless you actually measure it. So this is actually the one device that I have, which is really copper, okay? This is a conducting copper in here that is used for this device. So I'm going to poke it in here. The other end, this end, I'm going to connect it to the iron because if I connect it in here, it's gonna the two metals will have the same affinity for electrons. Therefore, it's not I'm not gonna see any current whatsoever because they have the same material. Okay. So I need to use a different material at some point, in which case I'm using this iron in here. Now I have my multimeter in here. My multimeter is right now off. I need to I basically connect it for the current in here. So what I'm trying to do now is I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to turn it on to a point where I'm going to calculate to measure currents and it's giving me the option to measure it in milliamps or microamps or measure it in amps. I know this current is not going to be so strong. It's going to be actually super weak current. So I'm not going to put it in the amp meter. Let me switch to this point to see exactly what you guys are looking at. Okay, so this is the amp, this is the milliamp, and that's the microamp. So I know this current is not going to be that strong to be in amps. I'm going to connect it to directly to the, uh, to the, uh, why do I have this in here? To connect it to, uh, to the milliamp and see if I have any reading. And if I don't have any reading, then I'm going to move it to the smaller current uh, gauge. Okay. For that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually probably move the camera a little because I don't know. Should I do that? Can I do that? No. So I need to move it first of all to turn it on. Right now it's reading zero current. There is no current whatsoever. Okay. And in the same time, I'm going to take this thing in here and I'm going to connect it simply to the iron, okay? And you can see in here that I'm reading a current, but it's not that strong. So what I need to do, actually, I need to move it to even a weaker version in here, a small current range. So I'm still reading zero in here because I don't have it connected. So now I'm going to connect it to see if I'm going to get any currents, okay? And this is how much current is reading, 28, micro, so I have it connected in here, 28 micro amps in it. So this is a current, this is a, a, not a very strong current, but it's strong enough to be detected by this multimeter. Now I remove the uh, wire, so it's reading back to zero. So this is how batteries work. This is how battery works, okay? This is chemistry. So all batteries that we go and buy from uh, stores, they have actually acids in them and they have different kinds of metals in them. And what they do in this case, they do the same principle. As long as they still have energy, the minute that the negative charge comes in from, from the, to this side and tries to cancel itself, the battery will move it to the other side and the current will keep on going. Okay. So this is the principle of the battery. That's how actually battery was invented to begin with by Mr. Volta. And that's how now batteries, chemical batteries work, at least the chemical ones. Do you guys see the illustration? Went through a lot of trouble to get this watermelon from my refrigerator. <laughs> yes, no? 
did I say? Yeah, the lemon. Sometimes I get things confused. Okay, so that is how basically the principle of the battery, but you really need to have different kind of metals in here because otherwise if you have the same one, it's not going to work. Let me test it to see if it's going to work. Probably it's going to work because maybe they are sitting at different temperatures or different angles or something. But if it works, it's going to be just an error, part of the error. So I have never tried this one, so you guys are going to be the judges, okay? There is no current right now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to yank this tool. I'm going to yank. I'm going to basically put the two things directly. So right now, it's reading a current, strangely enough. But it's 0 0.7, and it's getting down, okay? 0 0.4 microamps. It's very weak current. Compared to the first one, when I had 28, actually, right now it's practically zero, because this is within the margin of error. Okay, this is within the margin of error, actually. Okay, so there is no current. Okay, but as a matter of fact, if I take the whole watermelon and with the whole the whole lemon and connect them directly, I may even get some current. I still have no current. Okay, so I don't have anything. But how about my skin in here? No. Okay, so the point being in here, that's the principle. I'm hoping that you guys have an understanding now of how batteries work using this chemical reaction. Yes. Okay, which brings me now to the next question. Okay. Can you guys do it at home? Okay. I, I want to see if you can try it at home. Okay. Uh, probably this is a stretch, okay? So you might need to do something else, okay? What I have in here, I have a diode. Okay. And for that, I'm going to connect the diode to see if it lights. I, th I don't think that this will be high enough voltage for it to light. So I don't think that this is going to be a fair question, honestly. Okay, so I probably will skip this one. Because you really need something else to have it work at you, for you at home. Where is my... Uh... Okay. Where is my piece of uh, iron? There it is. Okay. Okay. Now it's not lighting up because this requires a high voltage for it to light, okay? This would require high voltage and I did not measure the voltage earlier. Okay. Let's try it because the diodes are picky, picky in terms of the direction of the current. Again, it's not lighting up at all. Okay. So it's not going to work. So skip that question for you guys. You, you, you got away with it. Because I, I don't think that you guys have multimeters at home to measure this weak current because a microamp is a super weak current. And remember, I'm using it with a lemon. Okay, I don't have really strong acid in here or anything like that. Anyway, so this is the, the, the this illustration. And in here, I know that they use a light bulb for it. So they must have a very strong acid in here to do this, okay, to connect it to the battery. For this particular, for the case B, of course, they have a very strong acid. For case C, it's a super weak acid, okay. For case A, it's even probably even weaker. So it's as good as this one, probably, okay. So it's not going to work for that. And again, you have the two different kinds of uh, metals in here and a carbon, and uh, one of them is acting as an anode. Where, which is the positive side, and one of them is acting as a cathode, which is a negative side. So that's basically how this uh, things are working. Again, water itself can act sometimes as a super weak acid and a super weak base. Okay, you have the hydro uh, hydroxide ions or H negatives, and you have the hydronium uh, ions, and they are super weak. So if you measure the concentration of one or the other, which are going to be the same number, they turn out to be one uh, ten of one in ten million, basically concentration, which is the molarity in here. How many mo uh, how many moles per uh, per liter? 
it's uh, that is basically the kind of concentration of either one of them which is super weak that means it's not really that strong acid and a base at the same time but that's enough for example to be used as a measurement to measure the ph of any kind of uh, uh, remember if i take uh, if i take uh, an acid and put it in uh, in water it's going to form this ions okay and when they form the extra ones they will cancel the uh, oh negatives and at the end i will have an overall net positive uh, higher number of hydrogen hydrogen hydronium basically ions versus hydroxide ions if i put a base in it it's the other way around i will have an x in excess of hydroxide ions which will cancel a lot of this hydronium ions and then i will have a net higher concentration of this uh, hydroxide ions in the solution so again the water in this case all i have to do is focus one or the other and by convention they focus on the hydronium ions okay how many in there if this number is high higher than the one remember the ratio i said is one over 10 billion 10 million i'm sorry okay so let me get my notes in here to see if i can get something out of it go to physics physical science one and share the screen with you guys so here is the deal at the equilibrium if there is no acid or base basically the concentrations is we get a pen in here the concentration is 10 to the negative 7 basically moles which is fraction of a mole per liter okay so that's how much you have or one over 10 million of H3O plus hydronium. Remember, the same thing in this case is for the OH negatives, okay? Both of them are identical. Now, if I bring an acid to the equation, remember acid, it will going to make more of this. So this number will increase, which means instead of 10 to the negative seven, I might have 10 to the negative six or 10 to the negative five. Those numbers are higher. This is higher by a factor of 10. This is even higher by a factor of 100. Okay. So that is how this acid is basically, we can tell it's acid. Because the extra ones actually will cancel this, which means there is a less molarity for the case of hydronium in here, higher for the case of uh, acid. In the case of the base, it's the other way around. In the case of a base, it's going to bring more OH negatives in this case. So... Again, I'm looking at the, high, uh, the hydronium in this case, H3O plus. So in, in a neutral situation, when I don't have, when the water is neutral, uh, it's 10 to the negative seven. Now, if I bring a base to it, it's going to cancel some of this and the concentration becomes even lower. It's going to go to 10 to the negative eight or even 10 to the negative nine. That means that this is a, by factor of 10, one tenth of what it was before when I put a base in. And this is by factor of 100. One hundredth less. So in the case of the base, the hydronium concentration goes down. In the case of the acid, the hydronium concentration will go up. 10 to the negative 5 is actually higher than 10 to the negative 5 by a factor of 100. And 10 to the negative 9 is less than, this is the line, by the way, 10 to the negative 9 is less than the neutral situation by a factor of 10 to the negative 9. So that is how we measure this thing. So it's because we're focused only on hydronium, this is the number we're going to focus on. So the pH now is defined as, by definition, the pH is this number. If it is seven, that means it's neutral. In the case, if it's eight, that means it's base. Okay. If it's nine, it's only the positive of this exponent. If it's nine, then it's even more acidic. I'm sorry, more acidic, more basic than this. This one is neutral. Both of them are bases. But the higher the number in this case, the more basic it is. If I get to a point where I absolutely have almost nothing in this case, remember this product in here is 10 to the power 14. In neutral situation, I have exactly the same number of uh, hydronium ions and OH negatives. So in this case, I have overall 
10 to the negative 7 times 10 to the negative 7, and this is constant, never changes, 10 to the negative 14. So the maximum I'm going to reach, actually, is 14 in here. This is super strong base. Okay? Now, for, for an acid, it's the opposite. For an acid, remember, 6 is acidic, okay? Five is more acidic than six, okay? So for the acid, it's the other way around. Six is an acid. Uh, five is more acid than the six. And then if you get to a point where you reach basically the smallest possible number, which is one in this case, okay, from one to 14, then in this case, you're looking at the strongest acid. Mathematically, actually, there is an expression which uses the, uh, the log, the pH by definition, is the negative of the log in the base of 10, of course, of the concentration of hydronium ions. Okay? The higher this number, of course, it's going to be a negative times negative. It's going to be positive. And uh, one of the things that you need to know, for example, if I have 10 to the power, any number in here, and if I take this and the log of base of 10, what it does is it takes this number out and becomes the answer is this one. So that's exactly what I was doing in here. Log in the base of 10 of 10 to the negative 7 is negative 7. But, but don't forget you're going to multiply by negative by definition to make it 7 exactly. So if, you're, if you don't care about the log, all you're going to look at is this number, the, the, the one in the exponent. Okay. Forget about the sign also. Because that's exactly what the log does. The log takes the whole number in the exponent. So what you do in this case, you're just taking that number, but because you're multiplying it by definition, by negative, so you're actually looking at just the uh, the digit by itself in here. So that is how we in, uh, how we measure the acidity and the, uh, the, uh, the how basic a solution is using the concentration of hydronium ions. That's the focus in here. Does this make a little bit of sense to you guys? Okay, so let's get more examples then. I know it's it's kind of, especially if you have never seen it before, it's a little bit uh, not that clear. But focus on this number in here, okay? Don't focus on the other one. Focus on the hydronium ions, period. So in a neutral situation, that's when both of them are the same, okay? Both of them are exactly the same. So the neutral, that's why this reaction is called neutralization, actually, because they they cancel one another, and at the end, you end up with water, pure water, which is neutral. Pure water. Oh, man. Why is it so slow now? Because I have so many things in here. So this is pure water. So for pure water, this is seven. That's why this reaction is called neutralization, actually, because both acid and a base, they cancel each other in order to bring their pH to that of the water, which is seven, okay? Some of them are higher than seven, which is the base. Some others are below seven, which is uh, the acid. And when they react with one another, they basically, uh, cancel each other, and they bring back to uh, water. That. That's the product that they will give you, H2O. And H2O is neutral, okay, with the pH of 7. So that's why this reaction is called the neutralization. So again, uh, the concentration of both hydronium and hydroxides are equal to 10 to the negative 7. Molarity and the molarity is how many moles per liter. So if you multiply the two concentrations, you will end up with 10 to the negative 14. 
because 10 to the negative 7 times 10 to the negative 7 is 10 to the negative 14. So here is a pH scale. A neutral solution where both concentrations are equal is at sitting at 10 to the power 7. An acid can go all the way to 10 to the negative, to, to negative 0, which is 1, really. The concentration is 1. So everything is exactly hydronium, nothing else. So this is super strong. Imagine water with absolutely nothing but just H. We cannot have more than, uh, than that. You cannot have more than 1 or 10 to the power 0. That is the max you're going to have. And again, you cannot have more than 10 to the power 14 because you only have left in the, the water with H or uh, OH negatives, which means that you're left with only hydroxide, period, end of the story. You cannot have more than that. That's basically where the pH is. And it's a number in between. If it is more than 7, it's basic. If it is less than 7, it's acidic. And what we're looking for in this case is the concentration of H3O+. So in this case, uh, what you do... Once you add an acid to it, it's going to add more hydronium ions, which means that it's going to neutralize a lot of the hydroxide ions and leave you with a net gain of hydronium, uh, hydronium X, uh, ions, which the concentration will be less than this number, will be less than 10 to the negative 7, will be probably 10 to the negative 5 or 10 to the negative 3, which is super strong. Then in this case, when you take the negative to the power 10 to uh, the, the log 10 to the negative power, it's going to be in this side. Okay. So add hydronium and the solution is acidic. Add the uh, hydroxides and the solution is basic. Again, this is the same point in here. So a neutral solution sits at exactly 7. An acidic solution, hydronium ions are much, much higher than hydroxide ions in which case the balance tilts toward the acid and the concentration is below 7, as you can see from this indicator, this gauge. And in a basic solution, actually, it's the other way around. The hydronium ions are less than the hydroxide ions, in which case the, the, base, the, the scale tilts toward the higher numbers than the, uh, than the 7. A sodium hydroxide, NOH, is added to water. The hydroxide ions concentration in this case, hydroxide ions increases. That's correct, which means the hydronium in this case decreases. When it decreases, then the number will be higher than 10 to the power, uh, will be less than 10 to the power negative uh, 7 for hydro hydronium oxides, in which case the pH will be higher than 7. So the pH is a measure of the concentration of hydronium oxide. So that is exactly the, the definition of the pH, and that is my question, third question today. Okay. So what is... You hear this word used extensively in, in culture and used everywhere, okay? And used in the industry and used everywhere. So I really want you to really remember that. So what is pH. Okay, and again, it's just the, the measurement of the concentration of hydronium ions. And it's exactly this slide. So pH is a measure of the concentration of hydronium ions. Okay, how many there are. If this number is high, that means it's acidic. If this number is low, that means it's basic. Does this make sense? Yes? No? Maybe? Okay, very good. I typed the question, Sherry. The answer is this slide. Yes, That's Sherry? Weird. That's so weird. It's not on my chat. The question should be from me to everyone. It says, yeah. what is it? It's not there. Okay. okay. Okay, let me type it again. Did everybody experience the same thing or just Sherry? No, I can see it. It's right there. It says, what okay. is pH? Okay, so that is the question. Oh, okay. okay, got it. Got it. Okay, very I good. Think <laughs> I just, it got lost in all the S's. Okay, very good. So... 
So again, this is the definition I wrote earlier in terms of, uh, of uh, the mathematical definition. Probably some of you probably never did log before, but that's really the mathematical definition for it. Uh, you have to remember that the answer sometimes is not a whole number. That is also actually a true case because you could end up with a concentration that is not exactly 0 0.0001 or 0 0.00001. So you might end up with a different number in there, in which case when you take the log, it's not going to be an exactly uh, an integer. Yes, Sarah. The, the question is in slide 73. The answer to the question is in slide 73. Okay. So, uh, again, my point in here is that this number may not be a whole number. So, the pH in here, because it involves this mathematical, mathematical expression. So, that's why you see sometimes the pH says that it's a very acidic solution of 4.237. So, what that means is, it's uh, not exactly 0 0.0000000. How many zeros there? Four and one, or three and one. But rather, it's a different number, okay? So that gives you the same answer. That gives you, when you take its uh, power, it's going to give you that concentration, okay? So that's a point that you have to remember in here. It's all, not always a whole number on the scale. So in here, for pure water, the log, basically what the log operation is the inverse operation of the exponentiation when you take to the power of. So you have 10 to the power of. Whatever that of is, bring it down when you do the log to that power. There are two kinds of, uh, at least two famous uh, logs. There is an infinite number of logs, but there is only two famous one. The, the natural log, which usually they use the symbol for it is ln in math. And n. And then there is this log, which is usually in the base of 10. Okay. But any 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 number can be a base, as a matter of fact. So that's some facts about the logs. But because by convention, when they write the word log, they mean the base of 10. In my notations, I specifically stated in the base of 10, which means that when you raise something to the power of 10, all it does is bring that power down. So as you can see, the log and the 10 are gone. So the only thing that survives from this operation is a negative seven. But again, I have a negative times negative, so it's gonna be a positive. So if you don't care about all of that math stuff, look at this number in here. Whatever that number is, strip it from its sign and put it down, okay? And dress it, if you wish, from its sign and put it down. So that's exactly what the log operation and the power in this case, provided that this power is 10, okay? So that's the question that's uh, trying to help you with, trying to understand what in the world is log, okay? So the log of a number is simply the power to which 10 is raised. That's exactly, so the log of the 10 to the power three is that three, okay? So that's more example. So what is the log of the 10 to the power two then? Can anybody help me in here? Yeah, just take that thing down. That's it. Bring it down. You guys are right. Sarah and uh, Emmanuel, just bring that thing down. That's it. Whatever that is. So it's not scary. I mean, people think that they are uh, kind of, uh, no, a log is a very simple operation. It's actually a lot simpler than the sine and the cosine functions. It's not really that. So just bring the thing down. Provided you are in the base 10, that's the only thing that is, you have to be cautious with. And it's actually the count of the number of zeros, that's all too, okay? If it's a positive number. So in this case, you have three zeros, you're counting those numbers. In the case, now this, you have to be careful with it, okay? Because I can do another thing in there and it might not show zeros. So this is too simplistic. This is not exactly 100% uh, the case, okay? Always. Because, for example, if I take 10 to the power 2.7, it's not going to give me zeros at all. It's going to give me some stuff in there that is 10 to the power 
seven. Let's see how much that's going to be. No, 10 to the power 2.37. That's what I was trying to say. 10 to the power 2.37. It's 234.428.422. something. That is not, doesn't it show any zeros whatsoever in it, okay? But if I'm looking for its log, it's just that 10, to, uh, that 2.37. So you're Emmanuel and, uh, and Sarah are exactly right. So if I only care about the log, the log in the base of 10, of course, since I'm writing uh, LOG, of 234.2, that is easy. From this operation, it's the same thing as 2.37, okay? If you have heard of the uh, uh, earthquake scales, what they re and we're gonna get to that when we get into the earth science part of this, they use actually the logarithmic scale. And the logarithmic scale sometimes can be misleading because they tell you, hey, this earthquake, is three, but that earthquake is four. So what is the difference between three and four? It is 10 times more stronger. Same thing in here. The difference between an acid of two and an acid of three is not just one degree difference. It's 10 times stronger. The acid of two is 10 times stronger. It's not just stronger. That may sound like some two people, one is slightly taller. One is, for example, uh, uh, 178 centimeters tall, and the other one is 167 centimeters tall. The difference between them is less than uh, 10 centimeters, this much, okay? But hey, if one of them is log, then it's 10 times bigger. Okay, so it's the log scale can be weird sometimes trying to understand it. For small numbers, it actually starts shrink and then all of a sudden it explodes. And that is because of the exponential function. The exponential function does that things exponentially. Man, we're running short of time and still have a lot of slides to run through. Okay, I hope that you have an understanding basically of what these logs are. Again, for the decimal points, all you have to do now is take the negatives in this case. So the negative two in this case indicates how many numbers after the decimal points. The same thing, Sarah and Emmanuel and everybody else, you, the log of 0 0.01 is negative 2. But remember in the definition of the pH, I'm multiplying it by negative because I know the concentrations are all less than 1. They cannot be, at most it's going to be 1. You cannot have more concentration than 1. Concentration that 1 means that you have 100% everything. There is nothing left. You cannot have more than 100%. So again, this is just the illustration of this log stuff. Going to skip through these things, okay? So the log of one, since it's 10 to the power zero, is always one, zero. So the log of one is zero. That's something worth remembering. So all of this discussion is the pH scale. Here are some common uh, elements in here. HCl concentrated can get to 10 to the negative uh, Man, that is even more than that, okay? Battery acid, it's super concentrated battery acid. Lemon juice, the one that we were experimenting with it, it's actually very highly concentrated, but not that of a battery. Vinegar or soft drinks, then we don't do this in classes, okay? So we don't talk about it too. Tomatoes, coffee, and then rainwater, okay? I'm skipping the things that I don't think that they are appropriate for class environment. Okay. Uh, milk, saliva. Now we're talking about, we're going to get into pure water. And after that, we're going to get into things that are basic. Okay. So blood is actually basic. Seawater is basic. Baking soda, soap, ammonia, and uh, hair remover. Okay. And uh, oven cleaner. Okay. I already removed my hair. Okay. So I'm fine. I don't use hair remover. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Hopefully you guys are having a good time on the other side of the screen. <laughs> okay. Again, acid rain is due to the presence of the, uh, the, the for example, in here, uh, sulfur oxides reacts with the oxygen to form sulfur trioxides. And then that will react with the water and the, uh, the, in the rain to form H2SO4. That is a very high acidic uh, solution, okay? Sulfur uh, oxides, uh, sulfur, I'm sorry, hydroxides in this case is very, very uh, acidic, okay? 
And if that rains, it's going to do a lot of damage on uh, places, for example, especially where metals are, because it's going to react with them. So this one is product produced in coal and oil. So this is basically what it does. And this is actually can, be, can affect the environments near also the businesses that produce these kind of uh, materials. Okay, an acidic rain may do damage to the environment too because it may uh, raise a concentration, for example, of the hydronium uh, ions in the, in, the, uh, in, the, uh, in the water that can actually uh, change the, the, layer, the, layer, the layout under the, uh, the beds of water, okay? Because of the carbon dioxide that is in the air that is absorbed by the water, now the pH actually is higher and the oceans actually are more basic, okay? Now, the acid-base reactions, as we mentioned earlier, are transfer of protons, whereas now the oxidation re reduction uh, reactions are transfer of electrons. So that was the first point of discussion today. So hopefully you guys remember that. So that is the one where actually not the ions they are moving, actually the electrons are. So the oxidation is the loss of an electron. The reduction, strangely enough, is actually the gaining of, a, of, a, of an electron. Yes, you think that when something reduces, it should lose something. And uh, actually, it's gaining an electron, in which case it's actually losing a little bit of charge. So the oxidation, for example, of sodium, it's losing two uh, electrons and becomes basically now a, because I have two of them now, okay? It becomes uh, uh, the sodium ion in this case, positively charged. The reduction is the gain of an electron. Now you gain some takes that electron. So the chlorine in this case takes that electron, and now you end up with and uh, you end up with Cl plus. So now you have an ion that was gained. So in this reaction, basically, okay. So this is one way of trying to remember this, okay? So you lose an electron, which means you oxide, Leo. You gain an electron, which means the, uh, you reduce, okay? Leo, the line went grr, okay? So that's one way. There are so many ways of trying to remember this one, okay? Again, losing and gaining electrons. So this is basically how uh, the metal, in this case, sodium, reacts with the chlorine gas to give you, in this case, the NaCl, salt, okay? The salt is regular salt. The, from the periodic table, if you look at the periodic table, the, the, the top right corner is where the tendency to gain electrons. So this R have higher affinity for gaining electrons, whereas the tendency to lose electrons is stronger from the opposite side of the periodic table, okay? So this can act more reducing. And again, there are so many complicated rules, especially when it involves oxygen and chlorine and things like that, that sometimes it's a little bit more actually in depth in the chemistry class than what we're gonna cover in here. But it's really a fascinating things in here trying to see because sometimes even this elements, they combine with one another and they form uh, actually a different, uh, one of them will act more like a, that normally acts as an oxidizing agent to become more of a reducing and vice versa, okay? Especially oxygen now, it's really a... So oxidation is loses electrons or gains ex oxygen. That is also another way of looking at it. That's the rule I was talking about. Or loses hydrogen reduction, gains electrons, loses oxygen or gains hydrogen. So this is basically the oxidation uh, reduction or redux uh, summary of it. We're not gonna get into all of the details of it, but this is in a nutshell, the rules that, uh, that are involved, okay? So for example, you have the, uh, how are we doing? We still have about six minutes to finish. No, actually more than that, okay? To finish this class. So let's see here how far we are. So again, this is because you have an iodine, which is also from the top right, and you have the bromine, which is sitting on that side. So now which one is act as, uh, as the, uh, the other one, depending on which one actually gains and loses the electrons.
So electric currents also can be uh, used to uh, to uh, by the uh, this type of reactions. So again, you can use it also to make fuel cells and batteries. And this is similar to the the example that I did before. Okay, except now you have involvement of the actual electrons, not the ions. In the example that we had before, actually we have ions, these are hydronium ions, reacting with both metals and uh, on both sides. Again, this is a normal battery. Okay, so let's see here where we are right now. Uh, one of the usefulness of this, like I said before, is the electrolysis, which was a big revolution in the 1800s in making one of the things that was really highly valued at that time was aluminum because it was very hard to make it initially. And uh, it was very costly operation. So it was something that was very valued. And now it's a common item in every household because, again, it uses electrolysis, which is an operation using electricity, actually, to facilitate the, uh, the, uh, the uh, purification now of metals, including, for example, iron. So this is the process involved, for example, on the, uh, for the case of aluminum. Okay. And the oxidation and corrosion. Corrosion actually is a, uh, a process with which a... Uh, um, metal, in this case iron, basically forms, uh, reacts with oxygen in some sorts of an oxidation operation of the, uh, the iron. And usually this is not a desirable effect, especially in uh, the industry. So what you want to do, you want to prevent corrosion as much as possible for, uh, for basically whatever you have in there. So what you do in this case, you coat it okay, with metals that, like for example, in the case of aluminum, uh, it reacts with the oxygen and forms uh, aluminum oxide, and that aluminum oxide will prevent further uh, further reactions and further duration of your uh, or your uh, of your aluminum. And the and the coating is super thin, that the entire metal you can still see it clearly and it stays super shiny. So that is used in the case of because it doesn't react further with any kind of oxidation, so it does not oxide further. So you can use it, for example, in with water or with a safe environment. Same thing, for example, for iron, we try to use other compounds that react quickly with the with the oxygen and prevent further deterioration of iron. Like for example, zinc reacts quickly with the uh, with the uh, with the oxygen oxides and forms a layer on top of the. Uh, the other one. So finally, we're going to talk a little bit about com combustion. Combustion is again a rapid reaction that involves basically the uh, uh, some chemicals, like for example, in this case, methane and oxygen, and produces a lot of uh, a lot of uh, a lot of energy out of it. So the key word in here, it's a rapid reaction. It happens so fast. That's what a combustion is. So a special case of those chemical reactions. Again, this is in a nutshell what this chapter is all about. Again, there are two types of main reactions and I mentioned them to begin with. The first one is that you have the acid base reaction, okay? And that is a neutralization uh, reaction because what happened in that case is the pH, the concentration of the hydronium ions is going to be brought down to that of the neutral solution at the end of the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the process. That's one, uh, one reaction. The second area type of reaction from the main ones that are discussed in this chapter is actually oxidation and reduction or redox operation in which in this case, there is an exchange of electrons versus the first one where there was an exchange of protons, okay? So this is in a nutshell with chapter, I don't remember, 18 now? Yeah, 18 is. So the next chapter is going to do uh, to be the last chapter of this section. It's going to be now on Thursday. So watch for another quiz that is going to be most likely published no later than tomorrow for this chapter, the one that we just covered, okay? And hopefully you will uh, have also that also ready for you guys. It's going to be covering these two chapters. Those are the main chapters for this part of the quiz for this part of the exam, I'm sorry, for the entire uh, section, these chapters, uh, namely 17 and 18, okay, that talks about chemical reactions and how to, to talk about them and the pH and things like this, okay? Uh, there will not be a quiz on chapter 19, okay? I may probably have a homework for it, but that's again, I may not so, depending on how it goes. Okay.
And the homework type is usually a lot lower questions and more time to go through them. And you have, they have different settings than the uh, this ones. If you guys don't have any questions, hopefully you have taken note of the questions of the day. I will see you guys Thursday. Have a good day. I'm gonna, no problem. I'm going to stop the recording now. Bye. Have a good day.